Welcome to The Revisionary, where we're creating from a fresh perspective. Okay, Stevie Joe, what are we working on in this video? It's a hutch top and bottom that you found on the side of the road. <laughs> He didn't want to pick it up. We didn't want to pick it up in the middle of rush hour traffic, clarify. Or during the day when someone would see it. Yeah, we waited until <laughs> nighttime. Um, but it was a good piece. Yeah, it was actually really good wood. Um, they didn't have any pressed wood in it. It was all built properly, um, except for the guy that actually did the work was not their top... top uh, brass there he was he was a little scrolly uh he had to be drunk deformed yeah he drank a little too much there was the, the scroll parts, work yeah the details were definitely not um high quality the rest of it though the quality of the wood and product was was good stuff so so the there was a scroll piece at the top and the bottom he's roommate right now it wasn't even a proper circle in the middle around part it was like really off so it just dated it and made it look 1970s so we're removing that and uh again i'm using fusion mineral paint and i started off with one color and you'll see later on i screwed up and i didn't i have chateau and casement and i think i started off with chateau and it was beautiful color but you'll see in a, in a little bit we did an addition and I wanted an English plate rack, but when we put this cabinet up on our coffee bar, I have two shelves on the coffee bar that are just on with brackets. It doesn't look right. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, this would actually be much more appropriate and go better with the kitchen cabinets. Um, but when we put it up, it was still a little too short. So I love my husband. And he built plates, an extra box. The plates didn't fit. And the plates didn't Standing fit. Up, so. So I needed an extra box built anyway, which you'll see shortly. We didn't decide on that until well after you had it up for a while. Right. Well, I so always you wanted put it the up English. And decorated it, and then decided you wanted to add more to it. So. Well, in my head, I always wanted it to have the English plate rack on it. So the way this is right now is how she was going to put it up. But it wouldn't have worked because the plates oh. that I have couldn't fit in the that. So there's the original sh one of the shelves up there still. Um, so I had a lot of playroom. I love it. It looks really good on here. But my dishes are the false graph heritage and they wouldn't fit into that upper shelf, nor would it fit in the lower. I didn't want the lower because I need my coffee pot down there. But up there where the detail is. Um, it was too low so the plate wouldn't fit in with the detail on it. So Steve graciously is building me another square to a uh, rectangle box to go on top of that. So what are we doing? Well, we were deciding if it was feasible to disassemble the top part and add anything to it. So this is where we took it apart and made that decision. Um, prior to that, we didn't think we could do anything else with it, but since uh, most of the parts were close to size of lumber that's today, it worked out. So we're deciding how high we could go up. So he was getting those measurements. There's a beam that coming out of the wall up there just a little bit. So we had to stay within that frame. So I couldn't go all the way to the ceiling. Nothing was actually square. Some of it was a little warped. The buildup of paint on it was a little bit too much. I had to get rid of that so that I could match up the top part and make it look seamless. I always make things so much more complicated for him. <laughs> I do this for me. It's never comes out. It's never easy. I decided to rip the, the wood boards that I bought down to the right um, width of the uh, existing boards. I didn't want to have extra 
seams, so I made it so that the uprights were just on top of the other one, and I put the, the shelf part in between the boards instead of the, the sides, instead of having... The a, cut edge doesn't show. Yeah, there's the, the end of the, the grain of the board does not show on the sides, and then the seam we covered up with the existing molding, save the, exist, the original molding. It's... Craig Jig. I did this because I don't have a good dado blade. Um, my table saw doesn't allow more than like a, two blades for a dado and it's not thick enough to make the cuts that I wanted to so I just used the, the Craig Jig. It's the easiest way to do it even though it's kind of generic uh, way of woodworking. It's really not a woodworking thing. It's an easy way to put things together without having any skill. So this, we're taking a plate and sorting out the best way um, to make the plate racks. So we devised a system where um, in each one had to be cut separately because there was variation in the bottom board, correct? The original board was a little warped. Yeah, there's a warp in the, <clears throat> in the so, board, so you had to really individually make each sec each piece, and I think we did eight pieces all together. And we put a a separating what are those things called? A separating board thing. The, to keep it an even measure between each plate. You know, you slip that in and it and then you know where to nail the next piece. A spacer. Yes, we built a spacer. <laughs> <laughs> I can edit that out. No, don't edit it out. They can see the real us. Uh, so we put a spacer in between the lower and the upper um, thing brackets that we're building. So you can see the bottom half and then he's doing the top right there. So we actually Put a spacer between the top and the bottom to fit them in. And so like lit, every single stick had to be cut a different length because of the warpedness in the in the original cabinet. Again, it was good wood, but a, it was a, a drunkard, I think, that put it together. Plus it sat in something very humid. Envi a very humid environment right? because um, the base actually started splitting apart had a lot of issues that you'll see in the later part of the video once we were able to get this pieces all the correct size we were able to uh, use the spacer and brad nail it in pretty quickly and he kept the groove for me in the back so that I could actually stand a decorative plate in the background on those other two shelves. So he's filling the holes. I just used Bondo for wood. Um, made it easier, dried quicker, and I didn't have to deal with wood putty. Schling. There goes the extras. So, and he's really good at being meticulous so he made sure that it was smooth at the connection site between the the original square and the one that he made the original rectangle and the one that he made i wanted the molding to be able to lay flat so i didn't want to have any ridges pushing out on part of the molding so i made sure it was smooth so he's priming it for me right now and then we actually, the original crown that was on the top and then one strip of molding, we reused again. Because I liked it and since it was the same size, just gave it back its character. And it was originally screwed on, so it was able, we were able to disassemble it fairly easily and set it aside and then I was able to install it on the new piece. And you'll see that there's cup, cup hooks under there. I have teacups and coffee mugs. This is the molding that we reused. Let's put the molding back on. 
that wasn't in great shape. There was a lot of chips and... And it's warped. It was warped, right? Yeah, wavy, so it's not perfect, but, you know, it's supposed to be an antique piece, so it's, it's the way it goes. The top part fit perfectly, which was a pleasant surprise. I didn't have to do a lot of extra stuff there. But honestly, for a piece that was free, you know, you, I don't think you could buy a piece that's solid wood for, it would have cost a lot of money. So he did extra hooks for me on the side so I could actually hang my cow, my cow head, and some charcuterie boards. Well, the one by 12s that I bought for that box weren't too cheap. I, I did have some scrap actually, but I did have So to here's some. my screw up. I started painting and I was like, oh, it's the wrong color. And then when I looked at my fusion mineral paint, I only had a half a container of the casement and a half of the chateau. So I actually mixed them together uh, one to one. I was like, uh, crud, wrong color. And it, and it was darker than I really actually wanted once I got it in the house. So mixing the casement and the um, chateau together made it just a really beautiful soft white. Just closer to the cupboards we had. Right. It looks really already. good with the kitchen cupboards. It's just off a little bit from the lighting in the house, but... And I'm pretty sure the cupboard the, was still cold, meaning the paint hadn't dried all the way. <laughs> Gotta decorate! So there it is, decorated for fall. And there it is for Christmas. So I got a bunch of mugs for Santa mugs and different mugs. I went antiquing and got mugs for when the grandkids come for Christmas so we can do a hot cocoa bar. And that's that half. That leads us to the next piece, which is the bottom the lower half. Part. Yeah. That he needed to be cleaned drastically also. There were mold spots on the sides. I was able to clean off with um, purple power I used. And then um, you can see the split in the wood there. And then the bottom actually was a plywood and that was starting to split. I had to make, do some repairs on that um, once it was cleaned up and we took the doors off and got it ready to actually work on. And I didn't want to keep that, again, that curved edge on the bottom because it just dated it to be in a 1970s piece of furniture and we lost those handles as yeah, well. Like the, the drawer pulls, didn't like those. So he figured out a way to build me a, a new base. Luckily I had some baseboard left over from projects in the house and I it turned out to be just a little bit off. I had to rip the bottom off so to make it the right height, but it didn't uh, change it too much. So here I'm splitting the wood apart, pouring glue in the space and then clamping it back together. Um, and then I had to even it out. The boards weren't perfectly, they were semi warped, so I couldn't get it perfect, but without knowing how to disassemble an entire piece. I couldn't get it any better than I got. So he, he took off those metal uh, plates for you, but the knobs themselves on the door, I did actually keep. Um, and the top of this, once he f glued in the part that was starting to separate, the top was such nice wood that I didn't want to paint the top of it. And Get rid of, fill those holes. Yeah, we had to fill the original uh, handle holes. And the marks left from those, from that hardware too. Left yeah, some marks on the drawer. Marks, and then I had to clean everything up. There were splits in the drawers that I had to fix. Like um, that, look at that, right down the middle. We primed everything, just like the top, uh, just to make sure that the original paint would, uh, or the 
paint she used would stick um, and not flake off if there were any flaws. Parts that we couldn't sand, we wanted to make sure the primer was bonding to it. And for this, the part, the fusion paint I used for this that you'll see in a minute is called Everett. It was new, came out this year. It's a beautiful, really olivey green color um, with some gray hues to it. A little on the blue side too, I guess. I, I don't know, it's gorgeous. So, and then the other thing I kept was the, um, the hinges and I just used some antiquing gold rub and buff. I really liked how that green turned out. It was very pretty. It was easier painting it upside down. To start with. So those are the original handle knobs for those. And I kept them because they were just really cool. As long as that metal plate wasn't underneath it. And the doors had swelled over time so they really didn't close. So I had to plane them down and make some adjustments to get them to fit where they would close back up again. We used the original magnets and hinges, so everything went together once we got the swollen parts of the wood uh, shaved back down again. In the inside we left the natural wood, the, the wood the way it was. Um, those new knobs I got from Hobby Lobby, they were black. I should probably sand them, but I did rub and buff on those as well. And that is how that piece turned out. So I did sell that through a consignment shop locally. You can see in the pictures that the there's no pressed wood in this at all. So it was, it was definitely a nice piece. It's a good lesson in picking up roadkill. Yeah, and you get lucky once in a while. All right, we'll see you next video. Thank you for taking time with us. Like and subscribe if you not, haven't already. See you next time.